Hey folks, so in this video, I wanna show off this cool setup that I have where I can manage all of my applications and my app config uh, for all of my machines and I can sync them between devices and all that. So uh, let's check this out. So first, let's just see it in action. So I've got this fresh VM here, which if I was to just look at, we don't have a whole lot of, you know, this is just all the default configuration. And if I look at like VS Code, it doesn't exist. Um, I don't have Brave, I'm just using Firefox. So just got the default configurations. But what I can do is go to my dot .files repo. So I'm using this tool called Chamois, and it gives me this little two-liner where I set whatever my GitHub username is, so it knows what dot .files repo to pull from. And then I just run this Chamois command, and let's just see what happens. So what it's doing is it's copying over all of my dot .files, so I have the application configurations, but it's also gonna go ahead and install the set of applications that I have predefined. So that means that whenever I switch between my desktop and my laptop, or if I spin up a new machine, I can make sure that everything is in sync. So I'll let this run and we'll come back once it's complete. Now it took about five to 10 minutes to complete all of this. Um, it had to install a whole bunch of applications, copied over the configurations, ran some scripts, but let's see what the end result was. So if I run ls latr, we can see there's a whole bunch of stuff now. I've got oh my Zeech installed with Zshell. I've got my tmux config. I've got my neovim config. I've got a whole bunch of applications. PyCharm's installed, Brave browser. We've got VS Code, all sorts of stuff. So in the background, I've also made a slight change to my configuration. So I've added one application that needs to be installed. So there's this tool, Helix, that currently isn't installed in this VM. But if I was to run Shemwa update, it's gonna pull those changes from GitHub. And so now when it runs this again, it's gonna kick off my uh, script, my Ansible playbook to go ahead and install the package. And this will take just a moment. There we go. We can see that it just installed the package and it's gonna go and check to make sure everything else is still correct. So with that done, now I can run HX and I've got Helix installed. So how does this actually work? I've got Shemwa, which is a dot file manager. And you know, you could very easily just create a dot .files repo and simlink all the files, you know, maybe creating a basic script. But Shemwa does some really cool stuff that I think is worth using. It doesn't really take any extra effort. In fact, it probably simplifies things. And what it lets you do is manage all of your configuration files. Like right here, I've got my tmux conf file. And so I've just got, you know, the configuration that I want across all of my machines. And, you know, you can do that for all sorts of things. You can do it for your dot config. I've got my whole NeoVim configuration set up in here. Pretty great. But the other thing that Shamewa does that most other tools, you know, I mean, you could do this yourself, but what it allows you to do is run these different scripts on different events. So the first time that you initialize Shamewa on a machine, it's going to go ahead and look for any scripts that start with this run once. And so let's say I want to initialize my oh my Zish shell, uh, their configuration here. So I'm first checking, does it exist? If not, let's go ahead and install it. And that only happens once because I don't need to do that over and over again. But it also has this other really cool feature where you can actually run on change. So whenever there's some change to a given file, it can detect that and then apply the changes again or kick off the script. So in my case, um, we've got a couple scripts here, like this GNOME terminal profiles, where I'm managing the configuration of my shell here, or my terminal. So what it does is anytime that I change this dconf file, it actually creates a hash and stores that in a database. And then anytime that it does a diff and it looks for changes, it's going to see, okay, is the hash of the current file different from what is uh, stored in the database? And if it is different, then you'll go ahead and kick the script off. Otherwise, it'll just ignore it. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, but the other element that I'm using here is Ansible, because Shamewa in and of itself is built for dot .files and scripts. So that's where I'm using Ansible to actually manage all of my applications and specific configurations that need an install. So if you're not too familiar with Ansible, it's just a configuration management tool where you define in YAML a set of operations to occur. So if you use these pre-built, what I believe are called roles or effectively packages, 
most of these are item potent, so you can run them over and over again, and it just makes sure that whatever you've defined is the appropriate state. So here we can see that I've got this install packages section, and I've got a whole list of packages that I want installed. Then I'm doing things like changing my shell, I'm installing some other things. Down at the bottom here, I'm installing some fonts, using Flatpak to install some package things like GIMP, all this cool stuff, and it's just all done as a YAML file, so it's very easy to work with. But so the way that this works is I need to first run once. I check to make sure that Ansible is actually installed. So I figure out what the right machine type is, install Ansible, and then I kick off the Ansible playbook. And then on subsequent runs, whenever I make changes, like I did when I added Helix, it saw that there was a difference from when it first ran and then when I went ahead and updated, adding Helix to it. And so it detected that it needed to run again. So very straightforward, honestly, you know, it might look like a lot to start with, but there really isn't all that much that you need to worry about. It's just a matter of finding what files you care about and then telling Chamois to look at them. So the way that that works is if you go to a file, let's say that you want to add a new file. So we've got this hello file and you know, the way that this works is you can say chez moi add. You can add a whole directory or you can add just a file itself. And so now that file is being tracked by chez moi. So if I was to do chez moi diff, we'll see that, all right, everything is good. It knows about the current state of your files. But if I was to go ahead and edit that file, uh, v hello, Now, if I was to do chamois diff, it would see, hey, actually, hello world should not be in there because what chamois is aware of is an empty file and this file now has hello world. So if I was to go ahead and do chamois apply, it'll say, hey, uh, there's been some changes since chamois last wrote to it. Do we want to overwrite? Skip, but we can overwrite. And now if we look back at the hello file, it's empty. So what we could do is, if we were to, let's just echo hello to hello. So if we ran uh, chamois diff again, so we'll see that there is that diff again. So what I could do is just add the file again, and now chamois is happy. Alternatively, we can do chamois edit hello, and uh, we can make these changes directly in here. Hello, hello, and Check it out. Now it identifies that, hey, there is a difference between uh, the workspace and the chamois directory. And now if we do chamois apply, cat hello, hello, hello. And then finally, there's one last thing that you need to worry about, which is actually knowing where the chamois directory is. So if you do chamois CD, that's going to move you to your chamois directory, which is in local share chamois. All of this, you know, instead of just doing the chamois edit, you could actually just modify in here as well. So if we edited hello, save that. Now, if I was to go back here, chamois diff, we can see that change has effectively done the same thing as using chamois edit. Very cool. Okay, and finally, when we're in there, we can see that this is actually a git directory because we need to be able to track our changes. So. From here, you could just do your normal git operations. You could add the files, you could make your commit, push it, and then on your other machines, you would just do chamois update. That'll then pull the changes and then run them. So it's a very simple setup conceptually. It's just doing two things, You're using a dot file manager and using Ansible. But what you get is a way that you can synchronize your different machines to the same state as far as applications and application configurations are concerned. And it means you can bootstrap any new machine within just a few minutes with just running a script. So very cool. If you don't have anything like this set up, I think it's very worth doing. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to actually set up. I'll link my repo so you can use that if you want as just a reference. But I think you know having a setup like this is definitely handy to have. All right. Well, I'll see you in the next one.